in the market for a small hatchback, we have two candidates for you. And these two candidates are the new Honda Brio and the all-new Toyota Wego. And we are here to take them on the, the big, big test. test. Now, first of the contenders is the all-new Toyota Wego, and it's totally redesigned from the ground up, from its design, its interior, and even its entire chassis. Now, the old Wego was more a point A to B car, but this one is genuinely good. But is it good enough to beat the Honda Brio? Now, with me is the new Honda Brio. Unlike its rival, this isn't a full model change. This is just a facelift from the one launched in 2019. But Honda did add some nice updates to it to help it keep up with the times. But can it keep up with the all new Wego? Okay, so I'm driving the Brio. Let's have a bit of a switch up this time around now. And we're here to test out the performance, yeah? All right, so we're at 60 k's an hour right now. And off we go. And that's 100 k's an hour. Took a while, but power was there. And, you know, the Brio's claim to fame is it's the most powerful car in its segment. So let's see how that actually stands up. All right, now I am back in my car, the Wego. And we're going to do the same test, um, 60 to 100 k's an hour. And that's to judge how well this thing can actually pass with two passengers on board. Okay, huge power deficit. It's missing one cylinder and 200 cc's. So we're gonna do 60 k's an hour and basically just try and punch it from here. Okay, down to 60 k's and now. Wait, why did the, the oh man. That climb to 100 is taking a while. So, oh my God, we're, we're just 100 now, Yeah. right? Yeah. That, that took a while, a while, <laughs> a while. And one thing I noted when we were going uphill, the engine is just so noisy. Yes. Just you hear and feel the engine grunting. It had such a hard time accelerating. Yeah. That's just with us on board. Imagine if there were five people here plus cargo. I, the four people plus cargo. Okay, I have no doubt sa makakaakyat to ng bagyo. Of course, of course. But with effort. <laughs> yes, with effort. And <laughs> you're probably gonna use up more gas than you expect to. Yeah. All right, guys, braking test time. And you guys know the drill by now. So at 60 k's an hour, full ABS engaged panic stop. So it's the Brio that goes first. And let's see how it does. So bring it up to 60 k's. Alright, so it's a small car, it's a light car, so I expected it to stop fairly quickly, but um, we'll see how the Wego goes. But the thing is, the Toyota does have a bit of a disadvantage because it's on narrower tires, it's on 14s, and this one rides on 15s and fatter section tires, but we'll see how it does. You've seen the Brio perform the braking test, so let's go with the Wego. Build up the revs to get to 60Ks, and off we go. and that was a full panic stop and from where I'm standing I think it did a little bit better than the Brio maybe this thing's lighter okay on to the maneuverability test and we're starting with the Wego this has a few toys that the Brio doesn't have as you may hear it has that beeping sound when you're reversing and it has a reversing camera, and I believe it has sensors too. It has reverse parking sensors. And steering is, it's not as light as I expected, at least compared to the Brio, but it is very easy to park. 
you have large side mirrors and the biggest bonus really here is just the reversing camera with the parking sensors because I don't think the Brio has that. So let's try driving out of this tight spot. Okay, so tight spot's not a problem for these small hatchbacks. Let's see how the Brio does. We're done with the Wego and now we're in the Brio, so let's start trying to park this thing. What I noticed really from the start is that this has lighter steering than the Wego, which is actually a surprise because that is a much newer car, mechanically at least. But the biggest drawback really here is that this thing has absolutely no parking aids, no parking sensors, no reversing camera, nothing. So, you're gonna have to rely on your good old parking skills. Oh, it has a parking sensor! Okay, I stand corrected. Personally, I'm fine with just having parking sensors, but of course, in this day and age, you have a display anyway, so why not just put the reversing camera there? And also, uh, the visibility overall in the Wego is much better. The A-pillars here are a bit thicker and the side mirrors in the Wego are a bit wider. So you see more of the sides when you're backing up or you're just sliding into a parking slot. So I believe it's going to be easier there. So even though this does have lighter steering, I think you can forego that for all of the aids you get in the Wego. Most people don't just rely on the parking sensors unlike I do and some of us do but yeah they'd probably prefer the reversing camera more so I guess in terms of maneuverability I'm gonna have to give the points to the Wego. Alright Leandro you join me in the Wego and features wise well I noticed the button here it's got stability control very interesting in this segment especially it's not a digital dash but you know these are affordable cars, that's what so you'd expect from this price point yeah Steering wheel controls, of course, are given these days. The screen's okay for its size, I suppose. But we have to talk about the problem with this screen, the disinfotainment, the CarPlay. Yes, I mean, it does have it, but we've Can't tried to like make it 10 work. different ports, and we're not even exaggerating, 10 different ports on this thing. We've tried like three, four, five phones, and it just won't work. We don't know why. It reads my phone as an iPod. I don't know what's up with that. Moving back uh, to the seats, I'm already liking the Wego already for one reason. Seat height adjuster. <laughs> I mean, okay, in a car this small, you don't really need it, but you know, it helps a lot. Perhaps um, another big bonus of the Wego in here is the dash cam. Oh, so, yeah, the dash cam. So, Leander? You can connect that to your phone via the Toyota DVR app, if I'm not mistaken, and you can download the footage there. And it's pretty handy because that comes as standard. All right, so we've covered the features. What about space? Well, here it's it's okay. It's pretty decent. I have my seat adjusted a bit forward just to make some room in the back, which we will find out later how it's how it is back there. Yeah. But it's okay. At least our elbows aren't hitting. Yes. Maybe that's, that's true. because you're not as big as me. But look at where my elbow is right now. True. Now from the driver's seat, I wouldn't say the footwell is narrow because I have no right to complain about leg space. But I think the um, the footwell. You know, they could have shaved off a bit more plastic down here just to make a little bit more wiggle room. But other than that, it's totally fine. With the Brio, it has it has nice stuff in it. It's got a six speaker system. You know, it's got it's got a very good entertainment system, even though the integration isn't as clean. But the Wego has features that sort of, you know, they have more weight. And it does look a bit more modern. It's a bit more pleasing to the eyes. At least you don't feel like you're driving something old, which you don't exactly want you have the digital bits in the instrument cluster yeah. and you actually have a larger display and it while it, it while it is a bit <laughs> laggy and it doesn't the apple carplay is a bit wonky it looks better it looks newer yeah. and you know i guess you know, it adds more to the I'm, I'm, for me it feels a bit more comfortable as well yeah. when you're looking at something like that and you know for me it's there are three main features that you know kind of swing it towards yeah. the wego it's stability control, the seat height adjuster, and, and the dash cam. It's a big addition. The dash cam is a big addition, yes. I agree. So while I hate that it's wonky, 
I have to give the points to the Wego in terms of this one. Yeah. You agree? Agree. All right. So before we move on to the back, uh, what do you think of the space here up front? Um, more footwell space. That's one. And you know, because of the big windows of the Brio, it generally just feels airier inside. Okay, so I wasn't really complaining about the seat, but now that you mentioned that this doesn't have a seat height adjustment, I kind of feel like I'm looking for it. Uh, but then again, I still can find the right driving position here, and there's still a lot of space here, so it's not, I don't really feel that cramped inside. Elbow room, I think it's a bit, somewhat the same, I think. Is it, mm, the distance here is this, pretty this much the same. It feels a bit wider. Mm -hmm. Tiny, tiny bit wider, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's because of the, the plastics around us. Maybe yeah. there's a bit less. Anyway, uh, to conclude this one, we have to check out the second row. Let's All go. Right. All right, backseat time. And um, if you plan to carry five people on board of this, make sure everyone is slim. Yeah, because you can't fit three people here. <laughs> and that's just me and Anton. Probably three Antons would fit, but two Leanders, one Anton, no go. If Charles <laughs> were to sit here, it would be like a kind of sardines. Yeah. But you do have decent legroom though, because this is adjusted to a seat position that allows me to move a bit more freely up front. Yeah, and the seating position on my end is actually my driving position. I did notice something though, and it's that the um, mounts for the seat rails are... Uh, in pretty, the way. <laughs> yes, they're in the way. Very much in the way. So your foot room, yes, you can stretch out a bit, but your your feet are gonna be like close together like that if you want to stretch out. And also, it doesn't quite have a flat floor here in the center. So this is really a questionable fifth passenger seat. Yeah. Okay, um, right off the bat, uh, the back seat of the Brio feels a bit roomier for me. I would agree with you because even in the legroom department, it doesn't have the very intrusive um, mounts for the seat rails. The floor is flat. Yes. And I can stretch out that bit more. So at least in terms of the back seat, this takes the cake. But overall, interior space, which do you think is roomier? I, I hands down go to the Brio for interior yeah. space, yeah. And surprisingly, even if it is still the same as the 2019 model we saw, I agree that this wins the interior space category. And even comfort, like when it's not running, yeah. comfort-wise, it's also better. So features, it goes to the Wego, but yeah. in terms of interior, it goes to the Brio. Yep, I agree with that. We'll see if all this stuff can fit in the back of the Wego, then we'll try it out later with the Brio. So let's begin. All right. Uh, disclaimer, dito gamit ng isang tao lang. <laughs> All right, so mm, tight fit, but it's enough. It's enough. Yeah. And um, it does have a tonneau cover, which is a big bonus because the Brio doesn't have that. So mm, overall, not bad. Yeah, this does get in the way a little bit, the uh, shock yeah. mounts. But other than that, look, it's kind of what you expect from this segment, about 260-ish liters, 300-ish liters. There I'm lots. expecting two big pieces of luggage won't fit properly here. Let's try closing it. I'm sure no yeah, problem. Yeah, close. All right. So, um, simple overpack day trip or overnight trip. Yeah, these cars can easily handle it. So we packed all the items in just to speed things up a bit. And this is what it looks like. So it looks like a tighter fit. I stand corrected, the Wego has a bigger trunk because we had a bit more space to work with. Everything that we put here, we put, we put there and we have more space to work with there. Yeah. So um, clearly we have a winner here. Yeah. Uh, it's not gonna be subjective at all. Yes. Because you know, you can you can probably see it in the footage. We just have so much more space in the Wego, so yeah. Point, point in this Wigo. one goes to the Wego. Yep. So we did a swap again for the nth time, and I'm driving the new Brio. I'm here up front, Anton is out there at the back, and we're gonna see just how comfortable it is on the highway. So we've been driving the Brio for a while already, and it's always been okay it's, it's not great in terms of space in terms of comfort but it's pretty okay we're on Calax and the road here isn't actually perfectly paved but you don't really hear much of the road noise and the bumps here are somewhat absorbed but out there at the back how is it it is quite loud <laughs> oh it's loud yeah it is quite loud here at the back but i do like the rear seats um there's nice under thigh support actually nakatikwatro pa ako dito sa likod yeah. 
um, even if Leander's there at front. It's not choppy, there is a hint of firmness, but it's not uncomfortable and the body control is well, well controlled. Um, there's no wallow, there's no sway or any of that. I mean, when it comes to chassis, talaga, Honda's, you know, Honda's always nailed it. Mm. We can't pick a winner just yet because this is just our first go. But coincidentally, we are also testing out the fuel economy. We reset the gauge as we enter the toll plaza. We're gonna try some city. We're try, gonna try and si simulate some city driving on the service roads here in Laguna and we'll see just how well or how fuel efficient it is after that run. So we're near our destination and after one pass along Kalax, the gauge is reading 19 kilometers per liter. Let's see how the Wego will top that. Perhaps the last swap of the day. I'm now in the Wego again and Anton is again at the back. And we are once again on this part of Kalax. A bit downhill, not not asphalt, so a lot of road imperfections, and mm, it's a bit noisier. Yep. I feel like, uh, at least from the driver's seat, it's a bit noisier, and I am 50-50 as well on the ride comfort. It's like, it feels like a tie almost. What do you think? It is a lot louder here compared to the Brio. I am having to raise my voice a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This this rides better, but if you're going to factor in a couple more things, no? like um, it is tighter back here. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I feel the body motions more back here, and you know that might be a recipe for car sickness. Yeah, ride isn't the only factor here. It's you know how you feel back here too. Mm. So yeah, um, it's a small win, but it's a win for the Brio. So we're done driving the Wego, and I stopped a bit farther than I did with the Brio, but it's still. A clear win for the Wego. It, the reading now on the gauge is 21.1 kilometers per liter, which is two kilometers per liter more than what the Brio got. We are now down to our final category, which is value for money. Anton, how much do these things cost? Now the Honda Brio RS retails for 853,000 pesos, while the Toyota Wego tops out at 729,000 pesos. Now the top spec version of this doesn't even buy you the base model Brio. For me, for me really, the most important bit that this thing has over the Brio is stability control. Safety over everything. Yeah. Um, it's nice that it has a dash cam. It's nice that it has a new infotainment. But really, it's, it's the stability control that quenches it for me. Although that does come at the expense of it losing a cylinder and 200 cc's. That's why it's priced that way. But then again, we go back to our acceleration test earlier and Sure, this one was a lot, substantial, a lot faster than this one. But then again, you're not exactly buying small hatchbacks for their performance. You're buying them for fuel economy. In which case, this one this is one the better won. one. Just this just clearly has the better package. Yeah, you can't ignore the hundred k plus difference. Yeah. So the winner for value, hands down, definitely is the Toyota Wego. Would you look which at that? brings us neatly to our verdict. Time to tally the scores. Six points to the Wego. Yeah. And it's the clear winner for today's big test. Yes, absolutely. This time around, Toyota didn't just sell a car and you know they know it'll sell because it has a Toyota badge on it. They actually put in the work in this one. I have to be honest, I thought it would only win in the price category. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I was so skeptical about the Wego, but it proved me very wrong today. Yeah, the, the Brio lost this big test, but despite its age, it's still very, very competitive, which makes you wonder what Honda's gonna do with the next gen version of this. But until then, if you're buying a small city car and you're in it for the practicality and all that stuff, not exactly for performance, you better, better go with this one. Yep, the Wego is the way to go in this big test.